Long before humans were still in the Warring States period, the world was divided into two, East and West. A clan named Oda does not participate in any activities. This girl wakes up from a dream, always in her dream someone keeps calling her. These two are Nobu and Mitsu. Nobu is the heir to the Oda clan but wanders around all day. Right now there is news coming in, recently one battalion. Nobu abandoned his coming of age ceremony to follow these guys. Immediately after, a mortar shell hit their line. The blonde blonde who dreams of strange dreams is Jean. Suddenly someone came out and blew a loud trumpet, startling her. He introduced himself as King Arthur's servant. Mr. Vinko presented a deck of cards. Jean understood the meaning of drawing one card. About the man Jane met in his dreams, he would be the king who would unify the East and West. Jean will have to go there to help you. At this time, the fortress on the Nobu army's side was ruined by robots. Jean and Mr. Vinci boarded a plane to the east, the badly damaged ship crashed into the planet. Now Nobu had seen everything. After gathering the dead soldiers in one place, Nobu decided to change this era. Nobu's two friends swore to accompany him in witnessing the falling star. The star fell on the mountain, Nobu ran inside despite the danger. Jean was unconscious, Nobu carried her out. Suddenly he saw the robot in the train, without thinking Nobu jumped into it and sat. The incoming army robot started shooting at the spaceship, Nobu piloting the robot towering appeared in front of them. Everyone felt this, and finally the big fool Nobu woke up. Episode 2, the girl Janae tries to ask him to let her go, Nobu angrily throws her aside. At this time, the other two robots landed and started attacking Nobu. Suddenly he heard voices echoing how to operate the machine. Nobu quickly defeated two robots. Janae groped and followed him out. Looking at the different clothes, Mitsu immediately knew she was from a western star. At this time, Ains appeared, holding a megaphone and shouting hello to everyone, making Nobu uncomfortable. Vinci ran over to greet everyone. As for the western star, they received news from Captain Vinci who had betrayed. Mr. Vinci immediately pulled a moving ship. They were on their way back to Oda Castle, Hyde kept teasing Jean and got slapped. He went into the room to watch Mr. Vinci drive the train, at which point Nobu approached her and asked her why she came here. Jean frankly accepted because of her destiny. Nobu is trying to name his new armor. Here, people often call him an idiot, and in the West, the fool. So Nobu took this name. Mitsu ran out to remind Nobu, this machine is beyond their understanding. Mr. Vinci let Hyde drive the train out here to talk to Nobu. He gave him a watch and armor, from now on he will serve Nobu. But in return Nobu must tell him the secret of this star. Nobu throws her a towel, declaring that Jean will be a man from now on. His brother's coming of age ceremony has begun. Nobu arrived just in time to give him a birthday present and informed the old man about the fall of the fortress. Nobu showed everyone the armor. This will be what helps them win battles. Episode 3, Takeda military side heard that Nobu has a new toy they will test the power of this thing. The Oda clan is holding a conference. The gods there did not agree to the westerners to stay in this place. Mitsu personally proposed to Mr. Vinci to be the advisor for the Oda clan. Jean jumped on the roof to find Nobu. He was the eldest son and not attending the conference made her very confused. Mitsu gave a lot of evidence but in the end Mitsu's opinion was still rejected. They leave and meet Nobu's younger brother. He invited Jean to the archery school. He knelt down and begged Jean to help him protect his brother. By this time, the Takeda army had marched close to the Oda clan's territory. Nobu ran over to urge their will to fight. He drew his bow and arrow and shot at the gap in the armor, thereby increasing the morale of the army. At this time, the new armor was brought by Mr. Vinci. Nobu had trouble when the enemy boss Takeda Shigen rode his armor to challenge. Seeing that the neighboring village was on fire, Jin immediately went to save the people. Nobu duel with Shigen. He was too strong for a fire-type robot when he heard Jean's voice. She couldn't escape the fire because she saved the children. Nobu skips the match and runs to save Jean. It was pouring rain. Nobu knew he had no chance of winning but still bet. Thunder resounded in the sky, the clouds dispersed to reveal the giant spaceship. Queen Hamiki said loudly to Nobu that she would grant him the ability if she accepted her condition. It wasn't hard to hear that. Nobu immediately agreed. He received the robot's ability to transform into a much more combative look. Nobu charged at Shigen with the lightning power he had just received. Episode 4, Nobu lunges forward and cuts off part of his armor before his body reaches its limit. Shigen was so impressed that his army immediately withdrew. 
Together they boarded Queen Hamiko's ship back to the territory. Queen Hamiko is now their ally so they have to set up a tighter defense. Nobu refutes this idea. Mr. Vinci came forward to suggest that instead of marrying Hamiko, engagement would be better. Nobu is now accepting Jean's challenge to a duel, but no matter how Jean swings her sword, she can't touch Nobu. Hamiko ran over, just by looking at her, she knew that Jean was a girl. Hamiko doesn't let Jean go to her crush's side. Mr. Vinci is improving the armor with the engineers. Mitsu took a look at him wanting to make sure no one other than Nobu could control the thing. He pulled out a deck of cards for Mitsu to draw. The cards he drew were future events. Jean was not used to lying on the ground, she designed her own bed. Picking up the necklace, Mitsu recalled her childhood. Suddenly she heard singing, it turned out that Nobu's sister was humming. Seeing Jean go out, she asked Jean how she felt about her brother. Jean took a deep breath and then cursed loudly, making her laugh. The engagement ceremony took place, the entire stage was arranged by Mr. Vinci. Taking this opportunity, Hyde also earns income from people coming to see it. At the beginning of the event, Nobu's sister sang a song. Then Hamiko and Nobu came out and stood on the giant machine to greet the people. The ceremony ended with Nobu's giant cake cutting. Standing from a distance, he unleashed a single sword that split the cake in half to everyone's surprise. Episode 5 The scout army from the west has arrived, looking at this fertile land makes them hungry. Nobu is now being scolded by his father, Nobu angrily leaves. Mitsu advises Nobu to think more discreetly. Nobu is still focused on improving the machine. He would prove himself by defeating the Shigen. Hamiko waited for Nobu to come see her for a long time. Ichi goes to see her, there is a story that Nobu asked her to convey the word to Hamiko. The queen happily went out, to defeat Shigen he needed to control his power according to her instructions. Meanwhile, Mr. Vinci saw Jean preoccupied with something. He pulled out a card for her to draw, again an omen to keep. Waiting for the night Nobu ordered the entire army to immediately launch an attack, as soon as he hung up the armor he immediately fainted. Right at this moment when the Shigen army advanced, Lord Oda took out his armor to confront them. At this time, Nobu woke up, it turned out that everything was arranged by Mitsu. Lord Oda couldn't fight Shigen, the moment had come for Nobu to drive the machine to confront him. Shigen waited for him for a long time, suddenly Mr. Vinci discovered an uninvited guest. He is Gaius one of King Arthur's round table knights from the Western Star. Gaius rode his battle machine to declare his aid to Lord Shigen. The Gaius immediately attacked Nobu, he aimed at the girl Ichi and rushed towards the castle. And Nobu is still being hunted by Lord Shigen. Seeing the old man being stabbed right in front of him, Nobu exploded with anger. After an explosion he also disappeared. Before he stopped breathing Lord Oda left everything to Nobu to take care of. He is the heir from now on. Nobu sobbed and swore that she would not spare that guy. Episode 6, The Fall of the Head of the Oda Clan, Causing the Neighboring Countries to Invade. Nobu disappeared again at this very moment. The younger sister and younger brother Nobu knelt before the relic left by their father. He told them to hand it over to Nobu. Janae went looking for Nobu but couldn't find her. Mitsu tries to tell them to wait a little longer. Katsu worriedly asked her sister's opinion, so Katsu had to do it. At this moment, Nobu came without saying a word, took the old man's ashes, threw them everywhere and left. In the evening, Ichi's younger sister stood in front of the cherry tree her father used to tell her stories. Her father had left the throne to Nobu, but she didn't see the right time to give it back to Nobu. Jean, after being enraged by Nobu, wrapped her luggage and left. Seeing Jean getting ready to go, Queen Hamiko was very happy. Meanwhile Katsu received a lot of people's trust. Tomorrow they will hold a meeting to hand over the position of the clan to you. Katsu would take it. Once he calmed them down he would give it back to Nobu step by step. And now Jean led the horse away. Mr. Vinci came to her to give her some advice. Janae picks up the card that Vinci gave him, this time it's not bad luck, it's strength. Janae didn't believe it and left. Mitsu doesn't accept Katsu's rise to lordship. Mitsu picks up the gun and mask to assassinate Katsu. And Jean was walking suddenly heard a scream. Mon went there to see, it was Nobu. He was so sad that he could only soak in the waterfall and scream. Suddenly she saw the assassin looking at Nobu, Hamiko took the bullet for Nobu. And Katsu was also hit by bullets. He still had a smile on his face before he died because Katsu knew who shot him. Episode 7, Nobu took Hamiko and ran to the castle to call the doctor. Mitsu was dumbfounded to announce that his younger brother Katsu was no longer in this world. 
sitting in front of his brother's remains, Nobu burst into tears. Nobu orders Mitsu to investigate the killer. Mitsu goes to see Princess Ichi, advises her to sleep more. Mitsu burst into tears as he vowed to serve Nobu until his death. Jean with a heavy heart went to see Mr. Vinci. Jean wanted to draw a card, but Vinci refused. On the side of Shigen's army, Gaius came all the way here hoping to cooperate with him but Shigen refused. The Nobu side was holding a meeting, everyone suspected it was Shigen. Nobu needed Mitsu's opinion and he just sat there. Nobu understood that he would meet face to face with the man who killed both his brother and his father. Jean will follow him, to where he enters the robot and jumps to the ground. Nobu went outside waving a white flag, Jean holding a megaphone requesting a meeting with leader Shigen. Nobu got straight to the point, but then Nobu understood that Shigen wouldn't do anything mean. They emptied the sake cup together and then got on the robot for a match. Shigen expressed his condolences on behalf of Nobu. Nobu vowed to take down Shigen. Taking the opportunity of Shigen to deliver a stab, Nobu kicked the spear to the ground and jumped straight up to stab him. Shigen handed over his strength and dream of unifying the country to Nobu. Suddenly, Gaius attacked and stole Shigen's power chain. He was about to attack Nobu, feeling unwell Nobu called Janae back immediately. The other Gaius, about the Shigen army camp, made up stories to tell the main soldiers Nobu had killed their king. They all resented Nobu and this was what Gaius was aiming for episode 8. After this incident, Gaius gained the trust of the Shigen faction's advisors. As for Nobu, after returning to his territory, he told everyone everything. Queen Himiko got up from the bed and came all the way here. He reminded her to go back to rest, then went to the workshop to see more armor improvements. As far as Vinci knew, this Gaius was one of King Arthur's most powerful henchmen. Lord Shigen had entrusted him with the power of the wind and his dream, and he must reclaim it at all costs. He ordered Hyde and Mitsu to immediately build a fortress to block his way to the territory. Suddenly Jean jumped, in her mind the scene of Nobu going to be killed. She hurriedly called Nobu back. On Gaius' side he couldn't control the new power. Jean went to Mr. Vinci and told him what she saw. Vinci's encouragement did not always come true. The army named Gaius entered the territory and immediately saw the newly built Oda castle. Nobu rode the robot alone and jumped down in the middle of the battle. Gaius will let the soldiers go first and he will stay to fight Nobu. There's no way to build a fortress so quickly, it's just a 3D reflection. Wait for them to enter enough that Hyde activates the bomb to explode their bodies. Gaius was so fast that Nobu struggled. Nobu lay still, and Jean ran to beg Gaius to spare his life. Right now her necklace responded to the call. It created a barrier around Nobu, the disbelieving Gaius tried to fire shells at him only to have Nobu hit back. He took the power of the wind from the contracted man and the robot became stronger. Nobu won overwhelmingly. Episode 9, Vinci himself created a machine for Jean to protect everyone. And Gaius went to the territory of Lord Kenshin. The clan castle has some new weapons, these giant speakers will help them talk to enemies from a distance. Queen Himiko herself went to the kitchen to cook food for Nobu. Jean began to test control of her machine. Hyde is openly jealous, when will he have such a battle armor? The western star also began to move. Jean tried forever but could not control the robot. Nobu kicked her once, controlling the robot must use both his body and mind. The news came, the remnants of Lord Shigen followed Gaius to meet Lord Kenshin and they formed an alliance. The Gaius just needed to take advantage of the rumor, when he heard the news of the terror, the people of Oda began to evacuate. Jean still wanted to control the other armor. Jean asks Mr. Vinci to help her, then she runs to Nobu and pulls him away. According to Vinci's research, her powers only activate in the case of life and death. She needed to learn how to overcome this weakness. The clan meeting takes place, they will reconcile with Gaius and form an alliance so that no one will die. Jean fights with one heart to protect Nobu. Nobu raised her bow to shoot and this time she parried. They then went to the parliament together, and Nobu got angry when the elders made their own decisions. Mitsu intentionally amplifies Nobu's speech for the people to hear. They agreed to fight with Nobu. Princess Ichi brought her father's relic to Nobu. From now on, he officially became the head of the Oda clan. Episode 10, after that defeat, Gaius was forced to ask for another armor from King Arthur. Lord Kenshin still refused to let him join the war. If war broke out, Kenshin himself would kill the entire Oda faction. Hyde and Nobu fight with each other, Nobu cuts Hyde's sword. At this time, Mitsu came to see them, Gaius' old armor was brought here to be repaired. 
Hyde is very much looking forward to driving it. Only then did Mr. Vinci let Hyde draw a prophecy card. Don't let Gaius make the Oda army go first. Before the battle broke out, they discussed it very carefully. It's easy to get up there, but it's difficult to carry the battle armor. So Mr. Vinci took out his new device. Nobu and the others split up and placed equipment everywhere. Hyde joined the army for the purpose of revenge. Hyde swore to serve Nobu to unify the country. But if Nobu showed weakness, he would kill Nobu himself. The soldiers discovered an intruder, they surrounded Nobu and Mitsu. Hyde activates the bomb. This device channeled all the energy that brought Princess Hamiko's airship all the way here. The Gaius was very well mannered, he sent his juniors to protect the armor. This guy in armor rushed out and hit everyone. Hyde also jumped into battle with him, but he was no match for him. Nobu rushes to his horse to help him to be blown away. The other guy kicked Hyde off the cliff. Nobu jumped to give Hyde the power of the wind. He assimilated it riding the clouds brought Nobu back to the game. Thanks to this new power, Hyde easily defeats the other guy. Everything was done, the Oda army retreated. Gaius was surprised when he was played such a painful game. Episode 11, Gaius doesn't blame his brother, now he will destroy Nobu and his land. With the help of the new armor, Nobu's fame resounded. However, soon Gaius will be here. Nobu ordered them to evacuate immediately, Jean alone could not protect them all. Mr. Vinci took out a deck of oracle cards for them to draw this time, which was a bad thing. King Arthur quietly observed the developments. Gaius' army began to move, he ravaged the clans allied with Nobu first. Nobu didn't expect this guy to come up with such a perfect plan. After establishing a pincer stance, the Gaius began to attack Nobu fortress. He ordered Hyde to bring his armor to fight him. The battle went on until the evening, the overpowered armor had to constantly spray water to cool down. The problem was that Gaius' spear was too strong. Mitsu has a plan, using Jean to deflect its bullets. Then Nobu and Hyde will simultaneously attack. Early the next morning Nobu faced Gaius head on. He aimed at Nobu, just waiting for it to happen, and then they all carried out the plan. Gaius refused to give up and continued to reload. Queen Hamiko used her ship to interfere with the flow of magic power. Nobu and Hyde rushed to chase him. This guy fires an extremely powerful energy attack, even Jean's protective power is completely useless. Nobu ran out and covered her with his body. It's just a ruin here now. The Gaius approached asking Nobu to surrender. Nobu sneered and invited Gaius to drink a cup of tea, and then would settle the two's animosity. Episode 12. Instead of continuing to oppose him, he invited Gaius to the tea party. There was one thing that Nobu was sure that Gaius had no intention of killing him. You will reveal his true purpose. According to Visi, whoever controls this power has the potential to become king. Ichi arrives at the meeting with the king's bull, she will take on the role of host for this event. Gaius calculated it very carefully, currently he was hesitant about making an alliance with Nobu. Jean found Mr. Victi to confide. Nobu went to his waterfall or took a dip, and Princess Ichi was also here. They camped together overnight. The next day the tea party took place, if the Gaius had any intention of opposing Mitsu, he would kill him immediately. Nobu stretched out his legs and sat in front. Gaius took the cup of tea Ichi personally made to drink with great satisfaction. On to the main issue Nobu wondered about King Arthur. Gaius did not hide it but let him know. He came here to bring the wind and fire elements Nobu got from Lord Shigen. Gaius tells Nobu that he is not the savior of this world but King Arthur. Jean stood up to protest, she confirmed that Nobu was the one. Gaius temporarily understood the problem, if so during the investigation he will pardon the Oda clan but in return he wants Ichi to be his wife. Everyone got angry at this request, but not Princess Ichi. In order to save her brother, save the people and save the family, she accepts this. She pointed the fan at Gaius, but if he dared to break his word, she would kill him with her own hand. Ichi looks so beautiful when angry, Gaius really loves her. Suddenly there was thunder in the sky, and Jean turned pale as something landed here. 